Flying monkeys. Oftentimes we've talked about flying monkeys in regards to they come into your life and they really just mess up a lot of things because they're on the outskirts, on the fringe of everything that's going on. But the narcissist is enabling and using them to be able to manipulate, to report, to attack. And so many different things that can happen that get confusing of like, wait a second, I thought you were a mutual friend. I thought you were someone in my life that wasn't this way. And all of a sudden they're acting different. All of a sudden they're attacking. They're going after you. And you wonder, like, is this coming from you or is this coming from someone else? And you start to realize over a period of time that these flying monkeys, these people that are coming into your life are not actually attacking you because of themselves. They're attacking you because they've been put a certain way. They've been um, convinced. They've been manipulated by the narcissist to bring them under their spell, bring them under their concept of what's actually going on. So as a result, these flying monkeys attack you. Well, in, in the topic of flying monkeys, I want to talk about it in, in two aspects. And one of them is going to be in the family system, you know, almost as a sibling or as a, um, a parent in there. But then also you have flying monkeys that are out and about all over the place. So I want to kind of dive in a little bit first. But we've been talking through the book, The Narcissist in Your Life by Julie Hall. And here I want to read a quick thing it says about flying monkeys. It says, often one of the more, uh, often one or more, children slash adult children or other relatives in the narcissistic family, flying monkeys are enablers who also perpetrate the narcissist abuse on targeted victims. Like the flying monkeys in the Wizard of Oz, they accept the narcissist's alternative reality, assist in the narcissistic cruelties and smear campaigns, and carry out abuse by proxy. It really is one of the best definitions right there of what they do. They accept the alternative reality, they assist in the narcissist cruelty and smear campaigns, and they carry out abuse by proxy. I think that's a best way to be able to put it, is a flying monkey is just abuse by proxy. Like it's a way for the narcissist to be able to abuse another person through another person, so the narcissist doesn't have to get their hands dirty, but they can sit back and they can watch and they be like, ha, that person is affecting you, that person is hurting you, not me. It's also another way for them to be able to disconnect. Not me, it's not my fault, it's them. And they find a way to be able to attack. When you think of it, a flying monkey is someone that adapts and admits and believes that narcissistic alternate reality. The reality that the narcissist is fabricating that says they are a good person, that says it's not my fault, that says I'm the victim, it's this person's problem, that twists everything, that smears it, that, that lies, that manipulates, that gaslights the whole situation. That flying monkey is someone that comes into their lives that the narcissist brings in and manipulates and molds and says, hey, go out and cause that abuse, that abuse by proxy. And you see this happen so often in the family system, in the work environment, and in relationships where someone leaves the relationship or leaves the family and there's still a flying monkey. There's an aunt and uncle that's still coming into the picture. There's a mother-in-law or a father-in-law that are coming into the picture. There's a coworker. There's someone that's a mutual friend of the relationship that's coming into the picture and ends up attacking the other person. Oftentimes in relationships, you'll see this even being the new supply where the narcissist will get the new supply so riled up about something that the old supply did that they'll reach out and they'll start attacking the old supply when they know nothing about the situation except for the perception that the narcissist has given them. Because again, a flying monkey has to accept the narcissist's alternate reality. This is why if you have flying monkeys in your life, so people that are reporting on you, people that are attacking you, people that are coming out of the woodwork against you, none of these people are ever going to be friends of yours because they are swallowing the lie from the narcissist. They're being gaslit about the own reality, the own thing that they're seeing on a day-to-day -day basis. The narcissist is saying, that's not true. I'm true. Focus on what I'm saying. Go attack this person. It's not that blatant a lot of times, but that's what I'm trying to get across says here there's a fine line between enabling and acting as a flying monkey. Because once they're invested in believing the lies that justify the narcissist's abuse of others, particularly scapegoated children, for scapegoats, the betrayal of enabling codependent parent may be harder to accept and forgive than that of a narcissist because they view the enabler as the safe parent who should know better. Flying monkeys may be narcissistic themselves. Oftentimes they are.
whether it's full out narcissism or whether it's like traits, a lot of times they are narcissistic because there has to be that moral compass that's okay with doing that to another person when it never even happened to them, when the abuse came from someone else or when the original story came from someone else. But they're like, hey, let me jump on that train and abuse that person as well. It says narcissists typically also have people outside the family, such as friends, employees, neighbors, and other community members who act as flying monkeys. Usually unaware, naive, psychophanic, and other narcissists themselves, they become involved in the narcissist dramas and unknowingly or knowingly assist in harming selected victims. For recipients of such treatment, particularly children, the experience can be devastating. Flying monkeys happen all the time. A lot of times people don't talk about it in the family system. They don't talk about it in the family system where there's other siblings in the family that get geared up as a flying monkey. That get geared up of, hey, like we're going to pick on this person. Either this is the dynamic that's been set in the family system of shaming and devaluing everyone or shaming and devaluing just the scapegoat. And just as we talked like earlier today, the scapegoat is real and prevalent in a lot of relationships, but the scapegoat doesn't always get blamed by just the narcissistic parent. Maybe sometimes the enabling parent joins on as well. Maybe the siblings, the golden child, the hero caretaker, anybody else, maybe they join in as well of blaming this other person. They become flying monkeys. They become people that are going to carry on the narcissistic reality and that are going to abuse by proxy. They're going to abuse that person person. How does this look in your life? What have you been seeing on a day-to-day basis? Do you have friends that are turning against you, siblings that are turning against you, or that have always been against you that are actually flying monkeys, that are people that are there, that are abusing you, that are coming after you, that are attacking you, not because of anything that you did, but because of a perception of a reality that they're believing from a narcissist? And how do you be able to stop it? The thing is, with narcissists and with flying monkeys who often are narcissistic, we don't tell people to buck up against it. We don't tell people to fight it. We don't tell people to try to justify what they're doing or anything like that. What we tell people is to leave, to go no contact, and to ghost. And for some people, this is one of the hardest decisions you'll ever make to be able to go no contact with family members, to be able to go no contact with coworkers, to be able to go no contact with the person that you've loved for a period of time. It can be very confusing, debilitating, and discouraging. But at the end of the day, you cannot stay with someone that is abusing you, and you cannot stay with someone who's also abusing by proxy and using another person to abuse you. If another person is abusing you, whether they're the narcissist, whether they're the original person or not, you still can't keep them in your life and expect to heal. The narcissist might be gone. Maybe you're out of the family system, but you still have that sibling that's abusing you. You still have that coworker that's abusing you. You still have that spouse or that ex or boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever it might be that's abusing you. But then you also have the people outside the relationship that have accepted what's going on. They say, hey, I believe in the smear campaign. I bought into things that they said, so therefore I'm going to attack you as well. Those are also the people that you need to cut out of your life. Why? Because that is how you heal. That's how you grow. And that's how you change. That's why Raw Motivations has been founded. For us to be able to speak the truth on a day-to-day basis. To be able to drop nuggets of truth on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, so that people can hear and understand and get an awareness about narcissism, get an awareness about what's going on, get an awareness of the culture that you came up in, the house that you were brought up in, the relationship that you just got out of. For people to get awareness, growth, healing, and change. Notice I didn't say hope. A lot of times people see me on this platform or they see Lee Mental Healness on this platform and they're like, wait a second, you guys change. Maybe my narcissist will change. We're not on here to bring hope. We're not on here to say, hey, stick with your abuser a little bit longer and it might work out because it doesn't. Our wives didn't. And they left. And the only reason they came back is they saw that we were both putting in the work actively growing, actively changing, getting into therapy, getting into counseling. 
leveling up who we were to become someone better, to learn how to be better, to learn how to control what is going on inside our heads. Is it easy? No. Are we going to still do it? Yes. Am I going to still do it every single day? Absolutely, because I do not want to go back to who I was. I do not want to go back to all those tendencies that were firing off nonstop. Do they still fire off a lot of times? Yes, but now I have active things in place to kind of control them and make sure that I'm living different and I'm living with intention of not being the selfish person that I always have been. So I go to therapy every single week. As the time of this recording, like 16 months of that every single week. That's why I do stuff every single day with a group called Wake Up Warrior where I'm writing stuff down, where I'm processing my emotions, where I'm centering myself, living in truth than anything else. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, we've got a unique challenge coming up with Wake Up Warrior. It's a 30-day challenge that I'm running with the Wake Up Warrior curriculum. And it's going to be a way for you to take back your power, to learn, to grow, to excel in life in four different areas. In your body, in your being, in your balance, in your business. And I would love for you to join us. We've got several people that are signing up, but I'd love for you to join us as well. Go to rawmotivations.com, click on Warrior, check some of the stuff out there, continue to the next page, be able to get a discount code, and then watch a video from Wake Up Warrior to actually see what it is. It's powerful. It started transforming my life two and a half years ago when I first went through the challenge. And I've been through it countless times again, and I do it on a day-to-day basis of what I work through in that to be honest, real, and vulnerable on a day-to-day basis. Hope you check it out. Hope you'll join us.